Hello there, IELTS students. Welcome to IELTS Podcast. You no longer have to worry, fret, or panic about IELTS because we are here to guide you through this test jungle. Enjoy these IELTS tutorials, and if you need more help or want to access the famous online course, you can visit us at IELTSpodcast.com. Hi, it's me again, Rob Buckinghamshire. How are you doing? Welcome to another podcast of uh, IELTSpodcast.com. So, um, today, you know, I, I, what I want to do is, is, is talk about IELTS speaking, but um, instead of part one and part three, let's have, have a little think about part two. The title of my <laughs> talk today, in fact, is help i know nothing about this oh my god think about this it's the speaking test part one part one went well enough okay let, let's see what topic i'm getting now here it comes oh god describe something you do to keep healthy you should mention what it is how often you do it how you do it, how easy or difficult it is to do, and finally, explain how it helps to keep you fit. Oh, God, oh no, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I mean, that's something I know absolutely nothing about. I don't exercise, and I eat all the wrong things. I've got 60 seconds to think of something to say. Help! Yeah, okay. Exams do have a nasty habit of the question we least want it. No, we've all experienced that at some time in our lives, I know. But will a lack of knowledge or life experience affect my band score? Do I have to follow the bullet points one by one or expect my score to go down? Hmm. Well, I, I, I think the answer to both those questions is no. But both are worth looking at in more detail. Remember, remember, the examiner is interested in your spoken English, not in your depth of knowledge or experience related to any topic. But it is still important for you to keep to the chosen topic. That means you shouldn't, you're not allowed to in fact, change the topic or even ask for it to be changed. Oh, years ago, when I first started, as, as, as when I was an examiner, in my early days, I think in the early a couple of months as an examiner. I remember a case when a test taker asked me if she could talk about a film she had recently seen rather than a book she'd recently read. I told her, no, I was following the rules that I had been taught in the examiner training course when I was told you cannot allow the, the, the uh, speaker in part two to change the topic or go too much off topic. But one thing is keeping to the topic, you know, generally speaking, you know, talk about a book, not about a film. Quite another is, is, is following the three or four bullet points and, and talking about them one by one. I mean, that, that's something you're absolutely free to do, but as in this case uh, of the non-healthy, unfit test taker, as my example is today, you don't have to. I mean, so what is the solution to the mind that goes blank when you see that question and you think, oh no. First of all, do not panic. There's always a way. Here's what I would do in that one minute preparation time. Ah, what? Talk about the first bullet point truthfully. Don't invent a false story. 
I know a lot of people think like that. You know, I'll make it up. Wait a minute. This is a very important exam you're going to take. Um, and, and, and believe me, I mean, it will take you all your time thinking about the details of this invented story rather than concentrating on the English. Huh? I mean, if you try to do that, in most cases, I'm not saying that there are not among us some people whose English or skills with language is so good and their imagination works so well that they can invent a story in a few seconds and it sounds convincing. But it's not that easy for most of us. So tell the truth. It's easier to talk about things you know, even if it doesn't actually correspond to what you may think they're expecting you to say here. For example, here are my notes describing what I do to exercise. Do nothing, no exercise, eat badly. I know this is bad. Should eat fruit and vegetables, walk more. Let me read that again. Do nothing, no exercise, eat badly. No, this is bad. Well, I could just write the word bad. <laughs> I'm saving time. Should eat fruit and vegetables, walk more. The other bullet points, the second, third and fourth, expand on the second, third and fourth bullet points. Easy way, easier way would be to talk about, for example, someone you know who is fit and healthy. If I'm not fit and healthy, I can describe another person. We always know someone who's much, you know, completely different to us, who would be easier to talk about. If I've got nothing to say about my experience, I can talk about somebody else. So here are my notes. Notes. Friend is fit. Goes to gym. Running. Half marathons. Careful diet. Not easy, needs discipline. Let me read that again. These are my notes, remember, in my 60 seconds. Friend is fit, goes to gym, running, half marathons, careful diet. Not easy, needs discipline. Okay. Well, would we be able to keep going for two minutes on the basis of these notes? I think so. In fact, I, I tried it out using those notes, and yes, I timed myself. I managed to get to the two-minute mark without repeating myself. Uh, but it needed a few examples to make up the time. For example, talking about myself, I kind of filled it out by saying, I mentioned that I enjoyed eating hamburgers and drinking sugary drinks and having a beer occasionally. Uh, then later I gave a few details about how my friend refuses to eat pizza or hamburgers with us because he is so disciplined. Okay. Um, the fact that I'm a native speaker and probably taught a little bit faster than most IELTS test takers in, in English, of course, is true. But even so, you know, I found myself at the end oh, struggling a little. I was running out of things to say. And, that, that, and that's why making notes as well as always keeping an eye on the bullet points in front of us on the cue card. Um, always keeping an eye on those bullet points that we have to cover while we are speaking. Why this is so very important. Because in a moment of crisis, it, it gives us, you know, something to go back to, a foundation, a base upon which we can, you know, build or, or reconstruct, if you like, our two-minute talk. Um, you know, I, I'm getting lost at the end. I look uh, and I think, oh, God, I haven't really given too much detail about 
explaining why. So, okay, I can think of something right at the end. Well, my friend, I think, is very disciplined and um, he, he, you know, he's very fit and I think that's why, you know, he's so um, good at that, his job as well because blah, 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 blah. <laughs> okay. The, Let's think a little bit about those notes, though. I mean, it, it's the notes, isn't it? When I gave you the example of my notes, do you think I was writing too many notes? Could I do all that in 60 seconds? I think there are two important issues to remember when it comes to our notes in 60 seconds. I mean, how, <coughs> sorry, how many points can you manage to write in 60 seconds? And, and what, what's it going to look like? What form should the notes take? A bullet point list style? Uh, maybe a mind map with connecting arrows to show cause and consequence? Um, thought bubbles or, or whatever? Something different maybe? Or, or just some keywords? Um, you know, there's no definitive answers to these questions of mine here. Um, I think, you know, what have you done? What have you found that suits you best? Try out different ways yourself. Um, find, you know, find out what is better for you. Practice using it and, and feel comfortable with it. I, I often, you know, check that out after the test taker leaves. I, I take a look at the little bit of paper they made notes on and uh, when I was an examiner anyway, and, 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 and find that um, you know, some of them are very elaborate. Some people hardly write anything at all. And those ones who don't write very or make too many notes are the, often the ones who, who are struggling at the end, you know, after about 90 seconds, one and a half minutes, they're running out of things to say and they start repeating themselves. Those that make lots of notes, perhaps even don't complete what they want to say. I don't know if that's a good idea either, but, you know, it's a question of finding out what is best for you. How many points can you make, though, in 60 seconds? Um, you know, I read somewhere that a maximum of five or six key words or phrases is the most you can write in 60 seconds. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I would practice trying that out myself actually and, 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 and try it yourself I mean um, if, if you've got a topic uh, when you're preparing for the test all those IELTS topics uh, time yourself of course make your notes check out how much you managed to write in 60 seconds was it enough should you be thinking of perhaps uh, doing it in a different way, cutting out words, just using the key words instead of a whole phrase. You don't have time for that. Maybe my notes were a bit too long. Uh, maybe I, I should have, you know, uh, should do more exercise. Oh, I, why don't I just write more exercise? Exercise more. Two words instead of five. I, I've got to do it as quickly as possible or abbreviate the words. I don't know. Find my own way, my own shorthand of um, giving myself enough time in those 60 seconds to write down as much as I can, as much as I need. Okay. Um, will it be enough all that? I don't know. I mean, remember that IELTS speaking tests become progressively more complex in two ways. Uh, yeah, I mean, part two uh, of the speaking test, to put it in very simple words, is, is harder, more difficult than part one. Just as part three, when you get into the conversation with the examiner, is harder than part two. But remember, the final question of, in part one of those three sets of questions is always the trickiest, the one asking you to speculate, to, to hypothesize. In, in part three, also the questions become increasingly more speculative, forcing you, encouraging you, <laughs> forcing you to use more complex language. And it is the same in part two. 
look again at the bullet points, at any bullet points, there's a difference between describing and explaining. Always the last bullet point in all part two questions is explain why, explain why, what are the reasons for this? Huh? I mean, this, is, this, this difference is key because the examiner is on the lookout for your more complex language. He's trying, he or she is trying to get you into using as much complex language as possible. In part two, it's up to you because you are free to say what you want in those two minutes. I mean, free in the sense that it's only you talking. There's no uh, interference. There's no conversation. It's an individual long turn, as they say it. So you are the one who has to take advantage of that. You are the one who has to impress the examiner with the complexity of your language, with the sophistication of your English. I mean, take this example. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to give you an example here of how we can uh, turn uh, simple explaining into, sorry, simple describing into explaining. Listen to this. I'm talking about, um, in this example, someone talking about their, their fitness routines and um, then trying to explain why, how important it is to keep fit. Well, yeah, uh, what I do most weekdays after work is that I go to this gym just near where I live. It, it, it's on the way home from work, in fact. Um, I try to follow some kind of routine there, you know, like working on upper body strength with weights a couple of times a week and other days on the running machine or something I started a while ago. And, um, and, and I really like it. And that's yoga. I find it really relaxes me after a stressful day at work. And if I, I know if I don't do something, then there's always the, the, the danger of putting on too much weight um, or, or even more important than that, you know, taking all the stress from work home with me and, and not being able to sleep properly. I mean, seriously, that, that's why keeping healthy physically is so important, I think, because it, it, it helps keep you mentally fit as well. Okay, so... When you're preparing and practicing part two topics, focus on, focus on the explaining part. Make sure you give around 25 to 30 seconds on that last part. Time yourself to get the feel of what talking for two minutes is like. I checked myself um, before actually, and uh, from, uh, where was it? I find it really relaxes me. Right to the end, it took me 26 seconds. Let me read that again. You can time me if you like. It, it's on that subject of yoga. Huh? Um, I find it really relaxes me after a stressful day at work. And uh, I know if I don't do something, then there's always uh, the danger of putting on too much weight or even more important than that, taking all the stress from work home with me and not being able to sleep properly. I mean, that's why keeping healthy physically is so important. I, I think because it helps keep you mentally fit as well. I, before, I don't know how many seconds that was. Before I, I timed myself, it was 26 seconds. Not bad, no, it's okay. That. Um, you know, it, it, it's all a question of, of uh, practicing in a very meaningful way. Planning, practicing, and knowing where you're going. Thinking about the importance of your notes. What have we talked about today? I mean, two things really. Not just the notes and the planning, but also how to approach a topic that you think, when you look at it at the, for the first time, is, wow, something you don't know much about or something you're not very interested in. Look at those bullet points. There's always a way. You've got that um, freedom, if you like, to, to, to 
keep on the topic, but not necessarily um, only talk about yourself. You can refer to other people. You can say things, well, yes, I, I, I've never had this experience myself, but I do have some friends who traveled last year, da, 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 da. There's always a way, believe me, okay? So, I'm going to finish off now, uh, wishing you all the luck, and you know that luck doesn't make itself, it's usually a product of hard work and effort, so keep going, keep moving, don't forget to send in anything that you uh, have written to the website ielspodcast.com check it out with the experts or have it done with your essay checker as well as uh, any other doubts you have look at the um, wealth of articles and, and, and advice and maybe some podcasts too <laughs> that are on the website okay good luck to you I'll speak to you again soon okay bye IELTSPodcast.com